In this episode, we finish the clutch install by replacing the starter, the carry the one third time, which worked great for two days, followed by replacing the starter for the fourth time. Uh, after that, we clean out the junk in the trunk and also drain the swamp that I was carrying around that I didn't even know about. Oh, I got one. Here we go again. This is going to be, uh, this is the, I lost track. I think this is the third, third time I'm pulling the starter out. So I turn the key and I just get a click like I did with the second starter. Uh, this was a newer one, a rebuilt one from an auto parts store. On the bright side, this is getting easier to do with all the practice I've had. And the bolt should be right up, right up in there somewhere. Uh, fortunately though, it is raining today. So that uh, adds another level of complication working here on the ground, outside in the mud. Looks like I'm gonna be calling it quits cause it's gone from a light sprinkle to hailing. Uh, so I'm gonna stop for now. All right, we'll connect the battery there. I don't need to tighten it up. I think that's, that's good enough. That'll be all right. Came off the other starter. Pull my tools out. Oh, awesome stuff. Almost done. This is uh, starter number four for this car. This is a, a rebuilt starter, a remanufactured, I don't know, but uh, the other starter was kind of working intermittently and then it stopped working. I was really worried when I took it into the auto parts store that it would work fine when they tested it, but uh, it worked intermittently when they tested it. So I did get another one and this is, uh, this is now almost in. That's clipped on and starter number four is installed. Hopefully this is the winner because this is not a fun job. On this. So here we are, we got a lot of the junk cleaned out. Now we can start on the plastic stuff. And a lot of this is not even the screws are missing. So this will be, this might be pretty easy. Let's pull this out. Well, yep, maybe not. Yeah, whoever did this last, they must have planned on lighting it too, because all the screws, clips, and everything that holds it together is gone. I think the seat is next. We got a, I know there's a couple of bolts in the middle here bolts over there the hinge are completely gone there's a couple bolts right down here I believe these seats come right out
must be a leak somewhere. They're getting kind of moldy. Should we weigh all this and see how much lighter the car is? So here we are after about 10 minutes of work. You want to take off the seatbelt holders? So there is the pile that we pulled out and amazingly, or maybe not amazingly, uh, the seat had about half, the rear seat had about half the bolts it was supposed to have holding it in. None of these panels had screws in them where there was supposed to be screws. Uh, several of the clips were broken or missing, so everything came apart uh, very easily. So we got all this cleaned out and found out I was hauling around about 100 pounds of water. Plus all the parts we pulled out, probably, probably 80 to maybe 80, 70, 80 pounds, but I'm going to call it 150. So we just took about 300 pounds out of this car. I'm wearing a jacket today because this is the GTS. This is the upscale model. This was the top of the line of Celicas in 2000. This was the upgraded model from the GT. Six-speed transmission from the factory. This was the car that Toyota built to compete with the Integra Type R. And it really fell pretty short of the mark. And this model here has had a pretty rough life. It's, it's had a lot of modifications done very poorly. Yet in typical Toyota fashion, it just continues to soldier on. This car is like a twisted mass of dichotomy. It's, it's a machine, but it's not a dumb, boring appliance. This car's flaws and limitations make it seem like a living creature. It's what makes it feel like it has a soul. Every car has a story to tell, and for this one, I see this car and I see community, family, friends, love, and respect. When I had a problem and needed to swap out the engine and transmission in this car, I had several of my neighbors and friends come over, and we were able to get it done in a matter of a few hours. And this was done not in a garage or shop with a lot of fancy tools, but with just basic hand tools, some know-how, a lot of elbow grease on a gravel and asphalt driveway. This story isn't just about fixing a car and the funny stuff that happens when you're working on stuff, but it's about building friendships and strengthening bonds of those around us. In the next coming weeks, you're going to see the next chapter of this car unfold, the story of the Cupcake Delivery Express. If you want to be a part of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and please like this video. Until next time, look for opportunities to serve family, friends, and your community. You may just end up on a Turtles Garage video. Oh.